Hello and welcome to this Python Maze Generator program. As you can see I have a grid of 20 by 20 cells and the program is carving its way through this grid cell by cell always choosing a random cell to go to next so every time you generate this maze it's always completely random there's number two maze generated the same and as it's carving its way through the maze now and again it gets itself caught into a, a, a dead end and it has to backtrack and that's what that green flashing square is um, there you go it's caught into a, a um, dead end so it has to backtrack to the next available space it has in its memory it keeps track of all the cells and where they are so it knows um, where the next three cell is now eventually it will fill all the cells up and what will happen is it will then backtrack its way back to the starting position and when it does that um, the code then will start to create a solution path from the bottom right hand corner back to the top right hand corner and uh, it's about to do that as soon as these uh, next few cells are completely navigated to almost there okay so it's now going to go back to the beginning and here the solution path is being generated now it always finds the shortest possible path also sometimes it can seem a little bit convoluted but not so much in this case okay so it's found its path back uh, from the uh, bottom right to the starting position so before I go through the Python code I thought it might be useful just to show you the algorithm that I used and I found this algorithm on the internet by searching doing a Google search for um, maze generator programs and I found this Wikipedia page and it's a really nice little algorithm here called recursive backtracker um, which is only really uh, several steps to it the first one is to make the initial cell the current cell markets visited easy peasy then you have to look to see are there any adjacent cells well depending where you start and cell is if your starting cell is in the middle then you will have four cells around you that you could uh, navigate to uh, in my case I started at the top left hand corner so I only had two cells to navigate to but depending on how many cells you have to randomly choose which one to go to so if the current cell is a neighboring cell which is not being visited choose randomly one of the unvisited cells then you push the current cell that's a cell you're on onto the stack then you remove the wall between the current cell and the chosen cell uh, then you make the chosen cell the current cell and mark it as visited that's great and that gets us loops that's going on all the time but eventually uh, you will get yourself into a dead end and in which case you have to pop the cell from the stack make that the current cell and start all over again now it seems easy <laughs> coding it wasn't quite so but um, the algorithm is solid it works um, and uh, yeah let me go through the code now and I'll show you uh, how I've achieved it okay, let's start at the top of the code um, the animation software that I'm using is Pygame so this first what one two three four blocks of code really are just setting up the Pygame environment um, nothing to do with um, the May solving program at all so these four bits of code really are just setting up the uh, the Python environment now I'm not going to go through this line by line that, that gets boring um, it's on github so it, I've got a left a link below if you want to download the program and play around with it modify it do whatever you want with it quite happy no problem there uh, but I'm not going to go through it by line by line I have left comments on every line so you can just get really basically read through it and understand what's going on but I'll just quickly give you an overview um, these are the starting positions of the grid, the X and Y coordinates. On um, Pi game, the uh, starting position is 0, 0. I'm guessing this is about there. But I decided to start my grid 20 pixels in to the right and 20 pixels down. So my starting position is going to be 20, 20. Um, and the width, the width of the cell is 20 uh, pixels wide and 20 pixels in depth. Now I've created a number of lists here. I have a list for the grid to store the grid in, a list to store all the visited cells in, uh, a stack so that it can be popped uh, when uh, the um, program gets stuck, and a solution. A solution really isn't a list, but it's a dictionary, and I'll come on to that in a little while. Um, basically, I've only got, really got three functions that I've written. Let me go to the bottom here. They are basically build the grid, carve out the maze and plot the route back so if I just quickly go through each of these 
So I didn't want to have um, a grid made up of 20 lines going horizontally and 20 lines going vertically. What I decided to do to, uh, is to have the grid made up of individual cells. So each cell would have a top, bottom, left and right wall. And that's what these four lines of code do here. Um, so they create the grid. Uh, and then going back down to the bottom, we have to carve out the maze. So this is the carve out maze section here. <clears throat> so the first part of the code is basically uh, the starting position of the starting cell. So single cell x and y coordinate, which is 20 by 20. Um, because it is a visited cell, I append it to the visited list and I also add it to the stack list as well. And then this is the main while program. So this is checking now to see if there are any cells to my left or to my right or to above me or below me that haven't been visited. So if there's a cell, let's, let's take this one here right. So if the cell to my right has not been visited and is not and is in the grid, so it's not outside the grid, uh, then I append this cell here with the coordinates of right. So this cell is, it gets re rewritten every time this procedure runs. Every time this while loop runs, this cell gets re rewritten. So <clears throat> if there's cell to my right, then it gets written in there the parameter of right. If there is a cell to my left also, then it will get any, uh, written in there cell left and so on. Now when it gets to the bottom here, this this list will have either zero uh, values in it or it could have four values in it. So this basically, this line here determines the length of the list. If it's greater than zero, <clears throat> it means it's got at least one in there. And let's say it's got two and then makes a random choice of which list to or which um, cell to go to. Let's say it goes to the right. So if chosen cell is equal to right, then it uses the push right function, adds the coordinates to the solution um, dictionary and makes the the new cell the current cell, pins it to the visited list and it also adds it to the stack list as well, pins it to the stack list. Now this push right function basically, um, let me go back to my grid here. The idea being originally was that if I had a cell here and I wanted and the next cell was available, the unvisited cell was going to be here and I was going to push through, I was going to remove the wall from the top cell the bottom wall and remove the wall from the top cell and then put a blue block there and a blue block there to show that the uh, this is the path of the program and if there was on to then to the right I remove the uh, right hand wall there and the left hand wall and a block there and a block there so it give you the, the, the impression that's the path but looking in, at, into Pi game I found that removing a wall is not as easy as it sounds and a lot of people are saying it's much easier to overwrite the wall than it is to remove it so that's basically what I did here is so um, when I've got this push left, push right, push up, push down, basically what it's doing is, is it's pushing the cell down, but rather than removing the wall, I'm overwriting it with a, with a block of blue code. So rather than just having two blocks like that, I've made one that's twice the width of the code. And if I was then go to the right, I'd use this block like that to give you the impression it's moving around. So I'm using I'm overwriting raw more than I that rather than removing the walls because it that's the easier way of doing it. I hope that makes sense. And that's what this um push up, push left, push right, push down is doing. So it's uh, basically just creating a rectangle on the screen twice the size of the of the initial cell. And then with Pygame you always have to update the screen. After time you do a write you always have to upgrade update the screen. Um, if there are no cells, let's say back up to here, if there are no cells to be visited because we've got ourselves um, navigate ourselves into a, a dead end, then none of these if commands are satisfied and we use the this else here. And basically what it does then it pops the last cell of the stack that was visited and then basically runs the program back from then. And these, 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 uh, this basically is just giving you animation. Uh, and the last piece of code, really, this is this this bit here, this plot root back, isn't part of the uh, algorithm. But I thought I'd put it in before. It'd be nice to sort of work out a root back. So if you notice on each of these um, push cells, push, I have a solution dictionary. 
And what the dictionary does, it keeps track of the current position and its previous position. And then I use this little plot back uh, procedure to, to create a route right back to the beginning. So basically each cell keeps a track of where it is, its current cell and where it came from. And then it just, this while loop just carries on until it gets back to the very beginning. So while uh, X and while don't equal 2020, which is start position, keep looping back, keep looping back. So it keeps, it backtracks really uh, all the way back to the beginning. That's how you always make sure you've got the most economical route back to the um, starting position. So basically that, that's it. That's the code. This last piece here uh, is still part of the Pi game environment. So I'm going to go through that. Um, yeah. So um, let me rerun the program again and we can uh, just see it working in action one more time. 20 by 20. I did create a, one, a bigger one. I think it was uh, 100 by 100. Uh, that's quite impressive, but it takes a long time to um, conclude. So uh, I didn't decide to use that. I thought I'd use a 20 by 20 grid uh, just long enough to see it working, but not too long to get you bored. So as you can see, as soon as it gets a dead end, it starts backtracking. That's what the green square is doing. Unvisited squares being completed. And because it always, um, every cell that is visited is on the stack, it always knows where to go back to once it hits a dead end. So backtracking, backtracking to the last position that it was not visited, and then it carries on navigating through the maze. It's fascinating to watch. I must say I do like this recursive backtracking algorithm. I don't pretend to understand exactly how it all works, but it, it does. <laughs> it's like a magic almost. There we go. Alright, back to the beginning there and it will start to draw the path back. Okay, so uh, I hope you found that interesting. Um, as I say, the code is on GitHub if you want to play around with it. Feel free to do whatever you want. Okay, thanks for watching.